Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries about strange objects right here in the solar system, referred to as centaurs. Very peculiar objects that can actually act like both asteroids and comets, that all most likely came from the outskirts of the solar system to eventually find themselves orbiting somewhere between Jupiter and Neptune. And because in many cases centaurs cross these objects, they actually don't have permanent orbits. In most cases they stay here for just a few million years before either getting kicked out or transforming in some other way. But in the last few years quite a few of these objects have been discovered and many of them are somewhat strange. As a matter of fact there are possibly several million of these objects in the solar system with many of them over one kilometer in size. But the largest one discovered so far is this. Chariklo, an object orbiting between Saturn and Uranus, and that's at least 260 kilometers in size. Moreover, a lot of recent observations essentially confirm that it seems to have an unusual ring, and actually even a series of rings whose origin is currently unknown, although we've discussed some of the potential explanations in one of the previous videos in the description. But in the last few months, there's now been additional observations of a lot of different centaurs out there, uncovering a few more mysteries about them, uncovering their chemical composition, but also potential origin, and a few more clues about the existence of water out there. And so let's discuss some of these new discoveries, and of course talk about what all of this means. And as you can imagine, a lot of these new discoveries and these new observations are really all because of James Webb Space Telescope, the telescope that has now captured several centaurs and their unusual emissions. And so far the evidence confirms that, in most cases, Centaurs seem to be chunks of the ancient solar system, or basically leftovers from the ancient solar system, leftovers from the planetary formation that never got to become anything. And though most of them are basically on the outskirts of the solar system, mostly in the Kuiper belt, quite a few of them get disturbed over time and approach the solar system much closer. And because Jupiter is relatively massive, it basically captures many of them, giving them a somewhat unstable orbit between Jupiter and another planet. Although some studies suggested that some of these objects potentially make it closer to the Sun, with Ceres maybe one of these ancient objects that basically survived the passage and eventually ended up in the asteroid belt. But as we're going to be talking about today, many of these objects, as they go through the solar system, very likely transform quite dramatically. Such as for example this centaur that was recently analyzed, 29P. This object is known for its very unusual, very active and somewhat periodic outbursts that sometimes can be very intense and last for up to two months. This is actually one of the most active objects in the outer solar system and we've recently discussed this in one of the videos in the description. And in that video we actually discussed a discovery of carbon monoxide mixed with carbon dioxide but that seem to be coming from two separate sides in two different ways, which essentially suggested a kind of a bilobal object, or basically a kind of a snowman, with two separate pieces very likely containing completely different stuff. And these bilobal objects have obviously been discovered before and seem to be pretty common at the outskirts of the solar system. So basically here, a lot of different objects seem to actually coalesce into larger chunks, with a lot of them staying as a single piece afterwards but some of them possibly separating and forming two new objects. And this is maybe what happened to Pluto. But we'll talk about this in a separate video really soon. So subscribe and stuff. But then on top of this there was another observation from a different object known as 39P, an object known as Otherma. And here once again researchers discovered carbon dioxide, but in extremely small amounts. But unlike a lot of other centaurs, there was no water or carbon monoxide basically suggesting different chemical composition and here the difference could be due to the size. A lot of previous observations were of centaurs in tens or even hundreds of kilometers in size, whereas this one, 39P, is actually less than 5 kilometers. And so due to the size difference, it very likely experienced different evolution and thus contains different material. But some of the most exciting observations were from this study right here that looked at Chiron. Here, Pinilla Alonso and her team analyzed 2060 Chiron that was originally discovered back in 1977 and is also known to contain a ring. And though this is not the largest centaur out there, it is pretty large, approximately 200 kilometers across. And well it turns out that Chiron might be one of the most exciting centaurs out there and seems to be quite special. 
containing a lot of compounds nobody expected. And so here, during the recent observations by the James Webb, scientists were able to observe not just the emission of the coma, or basically the cometary tail, but also see some of the surface features, because this object is pretty big. And because this is James Webb, we basically have an extremely accurate spectrograph showing us what it contains. And well here, researchers discovered a lot of different stuff. A lot of stuff that was expected, but also some molecules that were kind of surprising. So the usual stuff like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide was visible here as well, but they also saw ethane, propane, acetylene, and even methane, which was not seen around Centaurus previously. Although things like ethane, propane, and acetylene potentially has a slightly different origin. Here this didn't come from the early solar system, instead this was very likely the result of oxidation. So basically as various carbon compounds interact inside this object, and specifically interact with oxygen, they eventually become slightly more complex organic molecules. But methane though was a little bit surprising. And in this case it's believed that this methane is very likely coming from inside through a very peculiar process. And here to answer the question of its origin, researchers discovered something on the surface. That something was water ice but not the kind of ice we're used to. There's actually an older video that should be in the description that basically talks about different types of water ice and actually some of the recent discoveries in regards to some of the more unusual water ice. But basically the ice we're used to right here on Earth is actually surprisingly uncommon out there. And though there are something like 20 different types of ice that can exist, the most common ice that exists out there in the entire universe is what's known as amorphous ice also known as the amorphous solid water, that basically, instead of forming very rigid crystals, instead solidifies in a very disorderly state, with no regular positions, no orientation, no crystals. And usually this happens when water vapor condenses in extremely low temperatures, such as for example in outer space, making this the most common type of water out there, and the major component of a lot of different comets, a lot of solar system bodies, including previously mentioned Ceres, a lot of interstellar clouds, and basically most of the universe. Except for, unusually, planet Earth. Ice here is actually unique and somewhat unusual. But unlike ice on Earth, amorphous ice is very porous. It basically has a lot of holes and has a very different consistency. And on top of this, it can also absorb gases. Or basically it can store gases for a very long time. And so in our space, this type of ice very likely represents a source of a lot of different chemical reactions, where many different gases and very different molecules extremely slowly react over time. And so a lot of complex organic molecules we usually see in various nebula or even in various comets potentially was a result of chemical reactions inside of this amorphous ice. And so when it comes to Chiron, because here we observe amorphous ice on the surface, a lot of complex organic molecules, and even methane, it basically presents us with an explanation to what's most likely happening here. All of this methane, carbon dioxide, and even water ice is essentially pristine, very likely four and a half billion years old or even older, created during the birth of the solar system. But now that Chiron finds itself much closer to the sun, a lot of this amorphous ice is basically decomposing, and a lot of gases from inside of this ice are now escaping. And intriguingly, the researchers from this study point at this study that kind of confirms how this chemical reaction works. This was recreated in a lab using amorphous ice, but here scientists definitively showed that the emission of methane due to the phase transition in amorphous water ice will very likely result in the cometary tail we usually observe from various centaurs. It usually happens at specific temperatures around 61 Kelvin. And so here we have a definitive confirmation that centaurs are basically solar system leftovers with super pristine untouched materials on the inside. But because they all seem to behave differently and have very different emissions, there are obviously still some unanswered questions in regards to their origin and individual differences. Or basically why is it that some of them emit certain things in certain ways? And why does every active centaur we've seen so far seems to be basically extremely unique? At least compared to a typical comet we usually observe, which very often will have extremely similar emissions. But because we're now able to observe the coma and the surface of these objects, chances are that in the next few years we'll finally have some of the answers. And it's obviously really important to study these objects if we actually want to understand how the early solar system evolved and how planets like Earth formed as well. With objects like Chiron and the observations from Chiron, 
providing us with some of the first answers. But until future discoveries, or until we discover something else that's somewhat unusual, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.